Hi, this is Brian and this is a short video on New Zealanders understanding of peak oil and uh, we're just going to have a look at um, some of the uh, transport that you find on a weekend at the local su supermarket. Hmm. Definitely a peak oil car, no question about it. And uh, has kind of beauty of its own. Uh -huh. Hmm, this is unusual. We've actually found some glass, and there's quite a lot of it still being used with wine, well could you imagine wine and plastic? Absolutely not. However, plastic is certainly the standby here and as you can see we have lots and lots of products packaged in plastic. And plastic wrapped firewood, amazing. Yeah. Wellington's finest Lofty Sorridge. <laughs> and for Father's Day, I've given him a teapot. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I look forward to a few good oh, cups of tea. Oh, it's yeah. only one and a half litres, Lofty, but I'm sure yeah, it'll right. do you and me, mate. No, will be. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mm. Good on you. Thank you so Now, much. what have you got to tell us that's worthwhile, Lofty? This confused, you know, time we're living in? Well, I don't know. I was just listening to this morning. It's very interesting about parking ships. Yeah. The rivers in, in, in uh, Amazing. England. Amazing. Yeah. Big 20,000 tonners parked up in creeks. That in shows for, well, how bad the recession is, eh? Yes. And I had a ring from uh, my friends in England. Yet they, uh, our carpenter friend and his girlfriend. Oh, he's got, got a, back. She's got a job. Yeah. And he's got a job, but. It'll be many years before he can get out of the place to get enough money to come back to New Zealand. He wants to come back. He realised he'd made a mistake. And go <laughs> that's, it. that's my news of the week. <laughs> Who's not paying for his tickets? Well, I'm not paying for it. I'm not. Enlighten me. I don't know what you're talking about specifically. Well, they're talking of prospecting in national parks for various energy. That's minerals. That's coal. That's minerals that's down south. That's not oil. New Zealand is in an active fault zone where there's two plates that that's why there's volcanoes that run through the middle of it, of the country. And any oil that was or could have been there is long gone. So you're talking about minerals, heavy bent hard minerals. Oh, I see. So it's not, it's not oil and, and it's not natural gas. So coal. They're already exporting coal to China. Yes. I don't have something, something more to learn. But my question is really, we are very scared and very depressed with these discussions, last evening and now. And it will be fine really to have something optimistic. This is a question for all, all speakers, to hear something optimistic, because if we uh, want to consider, for instance, China, what's going on in China, how, what, what is the, the air and what is the pollution, uh, we are perfectly happy here and at the moment it's very hard to understand to, to, for one common man what's going on really and that we wouldn't be very shortly in so lucky as we are today. So what should be the most optimistic message to attract people to think about this, this, this topic really seriously? You only just started. Well, we're um, leaving the car behind cars, one for the daughter and a shared one, but uh, in this age of uh, climate change and peak oil, uh, one has to actually make some sacrifices, and if you're fit and if you're well, a simple one of course is to um, use a bicycle as an alternative as much as possible, so it might be a good idea to leave the cars behind whenever you can. And of course we've got a bicycle from 
a very modern Chinese factory where all the bicycles are made because China is now the industrial workshop of the world I guess and India is actually scrambling to come in behind and one could debate the uh, actual carbon footprint of a bicycle in the context of one of those big factories and I uh, should imagine it would be quite high so the next uh, option lower than a bicycle of course is to wear shoes and if you'd like to point down at my shoes you'll see I've got some walking shoes on unfortunately they have a carbon footprint as well and if we were to avoid having any carbon footprint it would be bare feet but we don't live like that and it's very difficult for us too so I guess that comes to the punchline will peak oil save stop climate change and after a considerable amount of reflection and research I have drawn the conclusion it will not but for now I'm going to do my bit to slow up the pace of climate change and I'm going to ride to my next point of destination on my bicycle Well, here's um, seven assumptions that I make in relationship to this small video on peak oil. And uh, I'll read them to you because I think that they're a good basis to uh, defend a position on. My first assumption is the debate over peak oil and climate change for the informed is over. My second assumption, popular culture has not acknowledged my first assumption. My third assumption, the implications of peak oil are understood by very few. Assumption four, the real problem is the industrial post-industrial society with its consumer paradigm we are living at a time of peak resources, not just peak oil. <clears throat> Assumption 5. Overpopulation is now a runaway train and overpopulation is a consequence of cheap energy. Assumption 6. Local government is no more prepared than government for a paradigm shift that is needed. Assumption 7. We have no planet B to go to. That is to say, plan A is planet Earth, and after that, there is no plan B. This is it. This is as good as it gets. <laughs>